Hello boys and girls and welcome back to another week of incredible faith. This summer so far we have met a load of Bible superheroes who have taught us what it looks like to have incredible faith. We've heard all about the stories of Noah and Moses and Abraham and Joseph and Rahab and how God was at work in their lives growing an incredible faith in them and through them he did wonderful things. Now today we are going to be learning that having incredible faith means that we know for sure that nothing is impossible with God and our superhero for today is going to help us think a little bit more about that as we learn his story and what God did in his life. But before we start, let's pray together. One, two, three. Dear God, thank you so much for the Bible superheroes we have learned from so far. We pray that you would help us listen really well to your word, the Bible, today. And we ask that you would help us all to understand that nothing is impossible with you. Amen. Well, one of our favourite things to do here to kick our time off together is to stand up, to move about and to sing. So as we're thinking about how God is amazing today and nothing is impossible with him, we're going to start off by singing, Our God is a Great Big God. Our God is a great big God.
and gentlemen, welcome back to the auditions for the world's next big superhero team. You may have noticed we're in a different location this week. We don't know why. This is the place to show you have the skills. Whether you're super strong, super fast, super smart, or super indestructible. We've seen some amazing powers already, and I know this is going to be a tough decision to make. But next up, we have number 300. Number 300, please. That's me, number 300, right here. And your name is? Mr. 300. No, I know you're number 300, but what's your name? That is my name. <clears throat> Mr. 300 Man Army. 300 Man Army. I bet you have an interesting story behind that name. I was the leader of a 300 Man Army. Oh. Well, 300 men? How did you become the leader of 300 men? Well, by sending 31,700 home. <laughs> I beg your pardon? When I put my army together to save Israel, I had 32,000 men. That's incredible. No, that was too much. Said who? Said God. God commanded me to send some home, so I did. 22,000 of them. So, wait, that means you had 10,000 men left? Yeah, God still said it was too much, so I sent more home, all but 300. That's crazy. How in the world did you defeat all the enemies of Israel with only 300 men? How do you think? I had God on my side. God gave me a plan that was even crazier than going into battle with 300 men. We broke a few jars, blew some trumpets, waved some torches, and the next thing we knew, we'd won the day. Well, Mr. 300, you sound like a real leader. Not just of men, but of faith. Hey, when you went through what I did saving Israel, I'll follow God's direction any time. He won't lead us astray. Thanks, Mr. 300. We'll definitely be in touch. Today's Bible hero was just an ordinary man. A man called Gideon. God called him to be a hero in a time when God's people needed a hero. Mr. 300 Man Army or Gideon was a man of faith. And when he trusted God's plan, he defeated a huge army with only 300 men and the power of God. Because today we are learning that having incredible faith means that we know that nothing is impossible with God. And today we're going to read Gideon's story from Judges chapter 7, verses 1 to 22. Early in the morning, Gideon and all his men camped at the spring of Harod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hills of Moreh. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands. In order that Israel may not boast against me, that her own strength has saved her, announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take them down to the water and I will sift them out there for you. If I say, this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the man down to the water. There the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. Three hundred men lapped their hands into their mouths. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men that have lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents. 
but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and the trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Midian lay below them in the valley. During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. If you're afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they are saying. Afterwards, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pura, his servant, went down to the outposts of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern peoples had settled in the valley, thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. Gideon arrived, just as a man was telling his friend a dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given camp to the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped God. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of them all, with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp below, yours and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guard. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars. Grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets, they were to blow, they shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. When the three hundred trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth Shida, towards Zerah, as far as the border of Abel Maloha, near to Bath. This amazing story of Gideon reminds us of the words the angel spoke when he visited Mary in Luke chapter 1. Nothing is impossible with God. The God who created the universe and all the laws that govern the universe is free to break them whenever he wants. God can do the impossible. And if we have faith, God can use us to do the impossible. Today, the story of Gideon has taught us that having incredible faith means that we know for sure that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Gideon was just a normal man and on his own with just his 300 men there's no way he could have defeated the Midianites. But Gideon trusted God when God said that was all the people that he needed in his army. And when Gideon trusted God, God gave the Israelites the victory. Not through their own power, but through his. Today we have learned that having incredible faith means knowing for sure that nothing is impossible with God. And now to help us think a little bit more about the story that we've just heard, we're going to do our quiz and then Dara and Tila are going to teach us how to make our very own trumpets so we can play along as if we are part of Gideon's 300 man army.
kids. My name is BK and this is Gila Bara. And today we are here to show you how to make a trumpet. So to make out uh, to cut um, to make a trumpet, you're going to cut out your cone shape. Um, we normally would use paper, cardboard, cardboard boxes like uh, recycled cereal boxes. So you can simply trace out the shape on a cereal box and you will need an adult to cut out the shape for you. Uh, see what do you want to trace out the do you want to trace it on this paper? Yeah. I want to. Come on. So you need an adult to cut out the shape. Now, you want each of you to fold it. Do you want fold it to like this? Yes. Like a cone. Like a cone. <laughs> <laughs> and now you need to hold it in place yeah, with some glue or some tape. Oh, it's the tape. Yeah. Okay. Just give it to you. Yeah. Give it to you. It's good. So, our mom is. So now we have the cones. Yeah. Yes. Tira, that's going to form the base of a trumpet. Yes. So you can put that aside, Dara. So to form the pop, the top we part get, of the trumpet, you get you need your pencil. Yeah. So you're going to start rolling. Can I roll? Back I'm going to right. roll. And roll. roll. Must we start at the edge? Yeah. Yes. Come on. Roll. Roll. I know, 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 I Need not be perfect. Okay. So, so now, whoever made this, we're going to put it in all the way. Mm -hmm. Push it. All the way in. Now we've made a trumpet. Yeah. Okay. Now that that's all fixed, um, you can put some stickers mm -hmm. just to decorate your trumpet. Yeah, you can paint your trumpet. Do you want? To... What? you want to stick that in? Yeah. Yeah. Stick the buttons. And here's the shiny oh, one no. I made for myself earlier. Yeah? No. So, stick that on. Mm. Yes, yeah. I can't open. I want another one. Yeah. You can get the one earlier. I covered it with a shiny foil. So thank you for joining us today. And let's blow our trumpet now. <laughs>
trust him Like when Noah heard that God would send the rain He built an ark though people thought he was insane But he had faith and so God saved him from the flood Because he trusted We're saved and we're forgiven by the gift that God has given We can believe what Jesus has done to save us now recruited half of our team of Bible superheroes. We have Noah and Abraham and Moses and Joseph and Rahab and Gideon. We've only got six more to go and then we have our full team of Bible superheroes. We have learned so much about what it looks like to have incredible faith. But most importantly, we've learned that it is God who grows in us incredible faith. When we turn to him, we give our lives to him and we follow him in all that we do. So as we finish up together, let's pray. One, two, three. Dear God, thank you so much for teaching us about the story of Gideon today. Thank you that nothing is impossible with you. Help us to remember that it is you who grows incredible faith in us. And we pray that everyone who's watching along today would be growing in incredible faith this week. Amen. Well, we hope you've had loads of fun here with us today. I hope you've learned so much. And most importantly, I hope you are trusting in God as your King. And he is growing an incredible faith in you. We look forward to seeing you here again next week. Bye-bye.